So okay. Matt and I have assembled a nice little Google Doc that you can kind of see in the border of this thing over here that I'm going to tap into, and we're going to play you a bunch of the best TikToks that him and I could find. So Matt, I wanted to start with uh, a format that I think both you and I believe in, uh, which is the format of uh, comparing yourself to another artist and bringing yourself into the context of what's going on. I thought this was one of the better ones. So to give you some context, the band 100 Gex are the genre-defining band of the hyper-pop movement, and they put out a new record. And then Cheem put out this video. Let's watch it. Yo, did y'all hear that new 100 Gex? That was crazy, right? But you know what would be really crazy is if there was another artist blending new metal, pop-punk, hyper-pop, and even ska. And it would be even crazier if they had other hyper-pop artists take some of their songs and remix them. If only. In my opinion, in that genre, that's pretty much as perfect as it gets. Yeah. Particularly, though, the timeliness of inserting it with a record everyone's talking about, that is uh, really, really where it's at. I think that, like, basically, if you're seeing everybody have a conversation about an artist and you can find a way to insert yourself, that is one of the best things you can do. One of the other things I want to point out with this uh, that I think people don't necessarily understand enough is like you can just go look at your 10 favorite artists TikToks and then just steal their best ideas and then make them appropriate to you. That is true. Everyone is like, oh, how, what content ideas should I have? Go look at your favorite artist. Call today. So I think the way to do that effectively though, is you have to look at what they did and then brainstorm how you can do it even better or else it starts to just yeah. water down endlessly. Like a good example is I often, I've been working with one band on an album rollout pretty extensively and we kind of just follow a bunch of the other artists that are similar to them and then we literally just make lists of do this video, but they missed the joke. Let's brainstorm how to do the joke better. Then we find how to do the joke better. And giving it an extra 15 minutes of just ideating often can make it so that you one-up the person because probably they didn't think Absolutely. about it enough. All right, Matt, you, pas you pasted this Apes of State video. Why don't we watch it? Apes of State, I think, are a really cool one just because they, like, they're just a punk band and, like, they're a real punk band. And I think that's really valuable because I think it's really easy to get overwhelmed by people with, like, major budgets on TikTok. This is just, like, some lady in her house. And I think that's I think that makes them really valuable to look at. One of the things I also think is I think is important is and this is part of where the community building comes from, right? Is like see what your friends are doing and build on ideas with them. And sometimes that's a lot easier than taking from a pop star or some major artist in your genre, right? But like if you don't have friends in the community to talk to, oh, like, hey, what were your ideas? If you don't have people in the community to talk to about your ideas, then you're fucked. And so, yeah, just this is why the community building thing matters because you need people to give you feedback and people to brainstorm with, right? Jesse's saying, hey, if you do an extra 15 minutes of brainstorming, you can get an extra mile out of it, right? He's right, but also you need to have people to brainstorm with. Yeah. And I think even the thing like that's sometimes the thing is like having a friend where you're both brainstorming on each other's TikToks as you get ideas goes a long way. Um, okay. This is a video. For, actually, let's try to do the one we were going to do. Full punk vocal styles. I'm chugging on whiskey at Glass and red, now you know I sat down to write a song and hope that you can sing along because the song will rhyme with the first one. Excuse me while I go jumping through a plate glass window. Oh, Lord. It's a good one, though, right? It's very good. The first thing I'll say is, so yeah, I, for people who don't get the context of this, this uh, style of music, she's basically going through the cliches of what it is and identifying them. And as somebody who knows that style and has produced a lot of groups in that style, uh, boy, did that nail it. But particularly also, you know, it's really smart if you look at the hashtags they did. Now, singing probably isn't the best one, but these are all really small micro genres. That yeah. they're making fun of. And that, that's the, that's the thing about her in particular is that April has learned to dominate the folk punk niche because they realized, oh, there's relatively few other people on TikTok 
doing folk punk as like their shtick, right? So if you understand that, then you can just kill it. And that's what they did. And I also think that, yeah, I think everyone listening to an artist with under 100,000 monthly listeners is kind of a music nerd. And yeah. they're kind of a nerd for that genre. So if you make jokes about that genre, it's going to work. Yeah, there's a lot of people who, uh, like, you know, it's like even an interesting thing, like, in music, the fastest way to get YouTube viewers is kind of doing, like, what uh, Finn does is, like, doing the commentary about the cliches of music really, really builds channels fast. And that the reason this also does so well on TikTok is people love this style of humor. Another I was, I was thing being I, a Finn uh, thumbnail. <laughs> one of the other things that I think that's very smart here is which one is your favorite? As we were telling you in previous streams, making sure to ask a question that gets engagement in the comments, it does you a lot of good. Matt, anything else to say on this one or should we go to the next one? I mean, I just think like if you show you have deep knowledge of your scene and can make jokes about it, other people who are nerds for that will think it's funny. That simple. Yep. I think that that's damn good. So if this is the last night and your feet So what I thought was really good about this one is, one, all you got to do, put a little money into some cheap Go V lights, you got that nice lighting, and then it's a lot of motion while they lip sync, it's one camera angle from an iPhone, and then just some lyric overlay, and yet still, this performed really well. But I think one of the reasons this performed really well, one of the things we were talking about that a lot of you mess up is you treat your posts like Instagram posts on TikTok, Whereas what this person did is this song is called Half-Life. Then they ask a question, even though they should probably have had a question mark there. But then they tell their story in the top comments. And as you can see, it got a ton of engagement. So I think that that's an interesting technique a lot of you could be adopting uh, there. Matt, what do you see here? One thing I want to point out, two things I want to point out. One, the very simple content concept that he can recycle with every hook he has, right? Two, uh, I one of the things that struck me about this video is the font used was different and felt a little artsier than the usual font you see on TikTok. If you use the same font as every other person, or you use one of the more sort of uh, cuddly bubble fonts that we see on TikTok, that's fine. But if you're trying to kind of present it as like serious art music about emotion, which is kind of what he's trying to do, changing up that font is visually stimulating and a little unexpected and kind of has an impact. Yeah. Trying to find your own style so people identify, like we talk about a million times ad nauseum. I have the hat, usually have the glasses, the background, Matt has the cigar, the hair. Having your own font, too, goes real, real far that you use each time. Having colors you use regularly goes real, real far. In fact, when I was looking for that video and which one to use of theirs, they used that green and blue on nearly every video. So it makes it so that you get recognized. People go, oh, I like that one, and then they're more likely to follow. Okay, so the next one is from Gods of TikTok, Mr. Kobe Dick, Mr. Dick, if you're nasty, rock the mic with a voice that's raspy. a damn good one matt you chose this one talk to us about it yeah so um so i was talking to jacoby about this actually the other day in france (laughs) (laughs) it's a lot of drum pick there (laughs) no literally what happened was backstage at hellfest i saw him and i jumped up and i said hi i do tiktok marketing for a living all i do is steal your ideas thank you and he gave me his personal email (laughs) nice but Papa Roach straight up probably has the best TikTok of any rock band. Um, I, I, I have to say, I uh, I think that's been true for years, and no one even comes close. Like they are, yeah. the kings of rock band TikTok. And when we do content rollouts, they are the ones I uh, I steal from the most, honestly. 
really, really, really clever band. I think here they're part they're doing something part of a genre that's very important on TikTok, especially if you're sort of a rock or metal band, which is the cool things happening at our concert genre. And that if you take video of cool things happening at your concert, people will go because they think, wow, it's like this great moment. And especially like they got the guy in the wheelchair, so it feels like much more of a community thing. You know, that's like a much cooler thing than just like some girl crowd surfing, you know, um, even though that could also be cool. Right. But it's like if you can share, hi, our shows are a powerful transcendent moment. Guess what? People want to go experience powerful transcendent moments and they're going to go to your show. Right. And so and if you look at their TikTok, that's a huge subset of their content. It's just they're filming probably all the shows and just choosing the best moments and just running some of those, a couple of those a week. I run entire TikToks where that's the whole strategy because I'm not going to get anything else because that's just how the band is. That's fine. Well, some people are saying nothing cool happens at my show, but what, luckily for you, I prepared a TikTok to answer to this that uh, will show you a cool, th- a good way of contextualizing things, even if you don't have people in wheelchairs at your show's crowd surfing. Okay. One of the I've biggest heard. pieces of advice. I've been doubling down on for a long time now has been fucking uh, always just be filming your live shows. Capture that footage because if you capture that footage and you can show people, hey, this is what we're about, then people will go because if it looks cool, they want to go. Let's watch this TikTok because this. Yeah, yeah. actually, I'm going to let me say something with that, though. Here's an interesting one. Friends of mine I was having some beers with. About a few months ago, they're like, well, we can only afford to bring a merch person. We can't afford to bring a cameraman with us. And I'm like, look, when you're on stage, your merch person should become the person who's iPhoning your whole set and then have another person cover for you and you they cover for them when that band's on stage that you're touring with, whatever it is. But like truly making sure someone's assigned because this video will show you right here. Now, when we're talking about the rock bands who are best at TikTok – Yet again, now we have Honey's Revenge. I think one of the best at TikTok I have seen in uh, the last year. And uh, this is a perfect video uh, example of what Matt was talking about with Papa Roach, but then doing it on a simple level. So let's watch. We'll look what the caption says. Keep wa- watching for the most random stage backdrop. So this video is 41 seconds and you like sit there and you watch and get a ton of that solid hook. I mean, first comment is, is there vinyl? Like they leave you with curiosity. And you hear that hook. And to me, that hook is tight. Yeah. But yeah, that's a good example of capture anytime you're out in public in case something wild happens. And also try to find the context you can bring to the footage you get. Uh, here, you talk about this one while I do this. Okay. So, couple things. Um, Windrose have sort of found a very Windrose have found a really interesting path for themselves in this whole game because they're part of like a European power metal scene that's like a little bit goofy, you know. And by a little bit goofy, I mean very goofy. But again. What did they do? They sat down and they identified, okay, how do I highlight that our live experience is like a really fun, goofy party where people have fun and they're dancing and they're singing along to some stupid song about dwarfs digging a hole, right? And that's like objectively kind of silly, but also there's a group of people who are really interested in that and think that's really fun, you know? For better or for worse, I'm friends with some of those people. But again, what they've done is, so they're a band with a gimmick that they're dwarves, you know, which is what it is, but uh, but they but they double down on that, right? And they showcase that to people in depth, and I think that's what's important, right? Is going like, hey, come to this show; it's going to be really fun. There's going to be other people who have like a goofy Lord of the Rings obsession twenty years later, and that's kind of important is to let people know, hi, this thing is for you too, 
I think what's even interesting is I bet you if they had done better job with that caption, this video would be even bigger because that video footage is so striking and so such a spectacle. I mean, yeah, this is a band I discovered from TikTok. Was I, I just was like, like they dug like straight up. Like I know people have their label and I didn't know about them. And straight up, I just saw it and I was like, this is so ridiculous that like he's dressed like Gimli and he's like doing the thing. Love it. Wild. Okay, let's now go to. Uh, speaking of cool scenarios. I like this because it's just a cooler variant on the like uh, lip sync your song in front of a cool background theme. Yeah, I mean that's an incredible background. And but what are the subtleties of that video too? Is the cameraman really moved around and kept the motion going in a cool way? And they really yeah. like focused in like when the drummer's gonna do something cool. They get the drummer, then they get the fire back in it. They move it in, they move it out. Kind of like what Matt's doing on the screen right now. He's just keeping the motion going. Um, the caption, as you can see, so some people might not get this if they don't uh, listen to this type of music, but they're basically saying Royal Blood, which is a big band in this genre, Muse, which is a big band, and then Queens of the Stone Age equals them. And that's a very smart thing. And as you can see, the first comment is sounds like royal blood which is a popular band in that genre and they tied themselves to that and gave hints to the community that they're a part of that so yeah uh but particularly i think the lesson here is when you see something cool that you can do something cool in front of do it and get it on tape and put it on your tiktoks no i mean i think that's really it is it's just like Film in front of cool things. And, like, don't be afraid to use studio audio. They use studio audio there. Yep. Right? Uh, like, 100%. Focus on video capture and then just throw whatever appropriate audio is in later. Yep. You can always blast it from a uh, Bluetooth speaker so you're in sync with it. Okay. Here's yeah. the next one from Silly Goose, which is a new metal band from it. So for those of you who don't get it, they go into Walmarts and Subways. And they play, I think this is a Waffle House, not a Walmart. Sorry, I can't keep my real America shit straight. But yeah, and then they play their new metal and capture it. And it does very well. I mean, this video has uh, over a half a million plays. I like that it nods to the to the founding document of our hardcore scene what the fuck is up, Denny's? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what, what true, tr truly, uh, I, 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 I want my uh, ashes thrown across a Denny's while a hardcore band's played when I die. One of the most important moments. But like, okay, but like, let's talk about this for a second, right? It's like, that's the what the fuck is up, Denny's video, which if you don't know, there's a hardcore band playing and right before the breakdown, the singer yells, what the fuck is up, Denny's? But it's hilarious because... It's a hardcore band playing at Denny's. This is hilarious because it's a new metal band with like a guy freaking out with like some fluffy haired Zoomer like trying to eat a sandwich in front of him. That's hilarious. And it's so unexpected and weird. You know, yeah. this is what it is. And they do lots of these and they're very fun and they get tons of engagement because it's spectacle and people go, oh, I've never seen that before. They watch it even if they are uh, not loving the new metal. Personally, I love that. I, I, one I, of the I, things. Go ahead. Oh, no. Sorry. I was going to say one of the things with. 
you know, if you're a smaller artist, and especially if you're a rock artist, that comes up in these last couple of videos, is having a DIY vibe to it is very, very helpful. Because it really helps people go like, oh, I'm early to this thing. I should check it out. Yeah. So next we have Getting People to Share, which is also from the Windrose Band. Let's watch this. I loved your face while that was playing. <laughs> well, you know what's funny? What I was taking in is that's a good video, but one of the things with live videos is like, I hate to say it, but like getting to know a little bit of mastering software can go a long way in making it listenable. Like those symbols were killing my ears. But also, how many views did that have? It has uh, 400,000, as we can see here, because somebody just pointed out I should also move these over so that we can see that a little better. Yeah. Uh, oh. But uh, what do you call it? Uh, I think even one of the more interesting things of this is, uh, too, that I bet you this would have done way better if they had done better fas hashtags on this because that's like a great, great prompt. Like, you're totally right for putting this in because it's a really smart prompt. Like, if you can identify a micro genre or a silly thing, like we were talking about in the last stream, the razor American razor grind. Like, you find something to call your thing and say send to a friend to d to listen. That's a smart, smart, smart move. Yeah, and again, especially when it's community building, and what they did on that video is, you know, this is very much a thing in like metal, where of especially in Europe, where it's we've got like the the group hey hey part, yes. um, which Jesse I'm sure thinks is cringe. I think uh, is great because I like Blind Guardian and have no friends, <laughs> <laughs> but I deserve it for liking Blind Guardian. Um, but but like the point being. Again, it's about making you feel like you're part of that community and making it feel like if I go to this show, I'm going to be part of a community thing. And that's like the power of group song or whatever, right? Is like there's a community component there that's completely undeniable. You know, if you're a kid getting into metal who doesn't have other like metal friends like I was, like seeing a video like that felt very empowering that like, oh, one day I could see this and be part of the, the thing. You know, now I just want to be left alone because I'm irritable. But... Okay, this yeah. isn't your therapy time. We're watching the video. <laughs> hey, do you also like to blame the government for all your problems? I'm Luca. I'm Donna. We do too. We're Honor, a thrash metal band from Switzerland. And we're on a mission to be a leading role in the next generation of thrash metal music. The government doesn't like us very much. But don't worry. We don't like him either. <laughs> we have everything from sing-along punky songs all the way to riffs that'll make you want to commit acts of terror in the mosh pit. Our music is a mix of old school thrash metal mixed with some of the newer things the genre has to offer. So we want to go beyond limits within the genre without forgetting the roots. So if you like to blame the government for all your problems, then, then you will definitely like, like Sonor. 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 It's Sonor. Sonor. Yeah. Sing the lights. Ha, 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 ha. Stay alive. It's a very strong video. I think they probably would have gotten a lot more views if they had tightened up that ending and found a way to incorporate that or just dropped it as a whole. But uh, that's very good. Yeah. I mean, I think there's a couple things here, right? Is I think having the artist mission statement video is really valuable, right? Because like, it's cool. I'm like, I now know what that band is about and I checked them out because of it. But also they did a good job of keeping it like appropriately funny and stupid and weird and you know, but also tied into kind of the tropes of the genre such that someone who's into thrash metal is going to see someone in a balclava and I'm up with a Molotov cocktail and be like, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, if I, I like, if I was 12 again and saw that on TikTok, that'd be my shit when I liked thrash metal and hated the government at like, you know, prepubescent age. I don't know. What were your thoughts, Jesse? I, I, I like it, but yeah, I think actually unheard sirens, the uh, point here too, that it needed more of their music. I do agree with that too. It could have, cranked up the music a little louder, brought a little bit more of that in, yeah. and then it really would have given a sticky intro to the band. Yeah. 
So this is by Tommy Lafroy Band. Uh, I think this is really good. Watch, watch this. You'll never leave me. You'll never leave this I want to go back and I'm going to play this on mute so that everybody gets the story because they did that smart thing they did where they tell the story so fast you kind of don't get to read it all so you'll let it repeat and then it will... Yeah. Uh, get rated higher in the algorithm. As we can see, this has almost a quarter of a million plays, so they did a good job here, but let's do this again without it on uh, the music playing. So as you can see, they're trying to tell a relatable story with their hook playing, and uh, I think they did a very good job. You know, they're sitting in, uh, what do you call it, the airplane, and Air. yeah. Don't think the hashtags were... Uh, quite as good but the thing long story short question mark that invites somebody to ask uh more about it and uh yeah matt what are you seeing i like i like the text on screen story thing and, and you see that happen a lot and that's a good way also by the way to, to keep the the view time high or the view percentage high especially if it's like a seven second video with the hook is that you're gonna want to read that and i think that yeah having like a story and having it be like a weird story tends to work and it's also you know, as part of like the internet monoculture destroying society, relatable stuff like that works really well. Or funny stuff where like like get developing that parasocial relationship with the fans, quite frankly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm gonna next go to this was my song of the early summer. It's by Aries and Wyatt Otis. Uh, but this is him telling a story about it. Obviously, you can see there he's just saying, this is the movie that inspired it. He's just playing in his bedroom. It's well lit. And that's all it needed to get almost uh, 650,000 plays. Yeah. I also think it's cool because it like it nicely taps into one of the key parts of the brand, the anime thing, you know? And that also is going to immediately draw in a certain amount of people who aren't necessarily interested in emo hyperpop, you know? But also, what he did a good job there was highlighting a few sort of hook points of his music outside of like the actual hook of the song, but also, Hey, we're going to have like the emo guitar with the riff (laughs) and, uh, you know, but also having like a very known anime going on underneath also, I think makes it a little more connecting, especially because he's not playing guitar in a super exciting way. He's just in his bedroom. I th- think like w- that's another thing is, is like all, we all learned from like that experiment that people were doing like H3 for a while that if like you play the speed run of the video game, you put that on the side. But particularly if you could find something to sidebar that ties in with your song and you do that, that's a very good way to get engagement that a lot of people don't do that I kind of uh, need to add to my like 60 day plan for people is that like you know if you like you know like one of the artists i'm working on an album campaign with now we're doing a ton of um taking their song and rescoring a scene of a movie with it we use this um free plugin called goyo i believe that removes all the music from any uh thing and just leaves the dialogue it's a really good ai it's free if you look it up like there it is goyo voice separator that's totally free right there and it does that incredibly well but then you can basically have a movie with dialogue with your song and show people an emotion that they've seen with things or you could sidebar it like he did and do something else having that added familiar thing is really powerful right like virality is like something familiar plus something new and so if you have like oh i've seen that i think that was howl's moving castle like i've seen that movie okay some music or what you're talking about with that album campaign. Same, same same shit. The next one we have is, yet again, some more Papa Roach, because, as Matt said... They're the best at it. This is your song. I've never done it like this. It's not, like, edited and done. Right. Yeah. Show up it's not, it doesn't sound good. It's unmixed. You know. <laughs> show me a close-up on the hands. Show me a whole close-up on the shaking no, hands. cool, dude. Don't oh. trip, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nervous, bro. Hey, don't trip, bro. <laughs> Oh, 
Wow. Yes, uh, I'd love to hit stop and stop thinking about the uh, convicted uh, murder accomplice dash domestic abuser Ronnie Radke. <laughs> Fun fact: Unlike Matt, I don't like taking selfies and pictures with people. But Ronnie Radke threatened to kill my old podcast partner, and I saw him at the Standard Hotel one night when I was drinking there, and I took a selfie with him and said, "I say, I gave him your parents' address and sent him the picture." <laughs> I'm such a good friend. That should probably maybe not make it to the YouTube edit of this. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> no, I just I wanted to point this out because I thought it was interesting, right? Because a couple really good things here. One, it's that idea of document don't create. You know, mm-hmm. two, it's like a collab, and they found a way to do the collab in a way that was like fun and just was someone filming and documenting. You know. And three, I think just the level of authenticity you see in that clip, especially for like guys that famous, is kind of remarkable, mm-hmm. actually. Like you see that Ronnie Radke is like clearly anxious, and you see like Jacoby Shaddix is like legitimately trying to be encouraging. And I think having that level of honesty is like remarkably helpful, especially because like you want to kind of have this idea of being friends with the the fan and also just really letting them into your thing. And that feels very intimate in a way you don't see a lot. And I think that's part of what made it. Yeah, I think that this is like one of those things that we have to remember with TikTok too, is that I always like to say to people, Instagram is much, and YouTube are much more about building relationships. But TikTok, you can build relationships on, and this is a great example of that. Like, it doesn't need to be with the most famous person. It can be just you showing vulnerability that like at times, you know, let's say you're filming behind the scenes in the studio and you're like, having trouble with the vocal, you're having trouble with the lyric, and then you finally have a breakthrough. Vulnerability moments like that build relationships and build your relationship to your fans in a really great way. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's go back to some Bonginator. My fucking guys. You know, I'm always talking about bands. I never talk about actual music. So these are Bonginator's metal hot takes. First of all, I don't get King Diamond or Merciful Fate. I think the dude's voice is way too goofy. I can't get into it. I've tried so many times. I'm really into doom. I'm really into stoner metal. I'm really into old school stuff. And and that should click with me because I know people in all those circles that love King Diamond and Merciful Fate. But I cannot get into it, man. Number two, I think that anything in the modern metalcore space is pop music and should be referred to as such. So he does this for another... (laughs) <laughs> two minutes, two minutes. <laughs> but i think this is great but yeah they're I, genuinely i think the best death metal band at tiktok i i, I have to say because like what to break this down a little bit for people like i know because i actually feel the same way about king diamond is that ruffles a lot of feathers yeah, king diamond rules fuck you yeah king diamond is fucking cringe uh look who's the top commenter gee look at that um and uh Wait. It's you. <laughs> Come on. Oh, uh, is it me? Hell yeah. Uh, and, uh, but as you can see, this got a lot of people discussing, and that's what TikTok likes. And I'm sure they got then served their uh, songs afterwards. Would have probably been smarter to have their song in the background. But oh, actually, yeah, and it wasn't playing, right? I didn't hear a song. Yeah. It wasn't playing, no. But like the thing is, like, again, so this ties into all the way back to Apes of the State from earlier, right? And this idea of like, if you're in an underground scene and you showcase a lot of knowledge of that scene, that gets people engaged and doing it with hot takes is good. Cause that gets people really mad. Like for those who don't know, King diamond is probably a top five, most respected metal vocalist. Yeah. So just to, to say, Oh, that guy sucks is like, and he, and also notice he didn't say it in a shitty way. Yeah. It was very, and I think cool. that's important. It was not like, like he wasn't, ed- wasn't, ed- he wasn't being a dick about it. Yeah. He wasn't like, Oh, fucking only dumb boomers like it. Cause they're fucking dumb. Like he was definitely like, Hey, like I have friends who like this. I don't get it. And to me, like, I think that you can hate on stuff, but you can hate on stuff in a non-toxic way, which is essentially what he did. Same thing with the metalcore comment, right? Where he's like, oh, it's pop music. Like, that wasn't a hateful comment. That was just, this is my hot take. And I think that's really valuable. But yeah, the hot take thing, showing the deep knowledge of the scene. Because again, if you feel like this person is into the same stuff that you're into, then you're going to feel a connection to them. And then... 
that builds the community. Yep. Then you're going to go up to that guy at a show and say, yo, you're fucking wrong about King Diamond. And you can have a conversation. And if he's smart, he'll sell you a shirt. But most of all, if you provoke comments from people, then they're very likely to be served your video. And yes, that really, really helps. So like, here's a good example is, of course, I can't get the artist's name in my head. There's this artist that I like one song of. It's like one of those ones where you've tuned into like six songs that have come out since then. And you're like, no, all these are terrible, but you love the one song. But they did the really smart thing is they would pepper in like kind of relationship hot takes that weren't cringe. Like, do you ever get that feeling like you think your girl's cheating and then you do this? And it would be like the thing of like all these people would be coming like, yeah, I go through that all the time. They were just being funny, kind of vulnerable about it. Some jokes, but some like real honest feelings. And then it'd be like the thing of you could just see people then like literally being like, yo, I got your video about your girlfriend fight the other day. Now I got your song. I love your shit. And like that works in this algorithm. Absolutely. Can we watch uh, the next Bonganator one real fast? Because I yep, thought that one was yep. actually that, 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 that is what I was queuing up, Matt. Hell yeah, brother. What? What's up? We're in State College, Pennsylvania. Uh, it's been about... Quick update. We found Diego right here. He Yo, gave us some up? weed, so uh, we're going to be chilling. Have a great show. Yeah, let's go. Yeah! Yeah! It's a great They are not a thinking man's band. <laughs> Poor guys also for being in that shithole town. What a fucking garbage place but let's talk about why this works one you're encouraging fans uh in community and showing the type of person you are Two, i th- think it's always good like if smoking weeds your thing it's another thing you show off to people and they feel identified with you and they feel a kinship and that helps build the relationship it's it's that idea of bringing people on the van but not making it cringe Right. Like they do a really like I think there's a lot of content of like, come check out our tour bus. And it's like silly and it's not, you know, whereas this like feels like you're hanging out with the band. Right. Where like you see them and they're dying because they're, you know, motherfuckers say you can't get weed shakes, but I think you can get weed withdrawal. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I think I've seen that plenty of times. (laughs) Like, you know, take that as you will. That's my hot take. But like, yeah, it just. You see that and you immediately think they're funny and they're fun. And you want to hang out with them. That's like a perfect commercial for how fun that band is. Yeah, that's a great way of putting it. And w- what's interesting, too, is that simple video has 21,000 plays. I bet you so many of those were people who had never heard of that group. And then were like, oh, these guys seem kind of chill. And they probably built uh, some kinship with them. And, it, uh, yeah, and you know, again, perfect. I'm friends with those guys. Like they tell me like, this is the thing is people who are not even like really death metal people show up to their shows. Cause they think it's, they, they, they're metal people and they think it's there. He's funny. They think what they do is clever. People connect because they're telling the story. They're going, Hey, we're like a bunch of stupid stoners. If you're a stupid stoner, come smoke some weed. Okay. Now we're going to go to back to Mr. Jacoby Dick of Papa Roach again. What Jerry of Papa Roach actually hears in his in-ear monitors. And Formula One is underway on the streets of Baku. Good reaction time for Verstappen, but it's Charles Leclerc who maintains the lead into turn one. The top three are as they were going. Absolutely perfect roast that gets you to know a band member. Yeah. And they have so many, ver- like this is part of why I highlighted this one is Papa Roach have like 20 videos like this and they all kill. I could totally see, see this. I mean, it's, it's a funny thing that if you can like, I'm sure what was happening is like, they're like, oh, you know, we got some good footage of Jerry and it's like, okay, what's a good joke? Okay, let's go make that joke. We'll film the front end of it. And that's that nice, easy way to engage. And they've played it straight too. Like they've actually gone and showed you what it sounds like in his monitors, which is also like kind of a cool thing separately, Mm -hmm. right? Like there's a lot of bits you can do there. Uh, So the last one we have is apes of state. And your note is hitting back at the haters, you know? Met our mayor the other day. I don't know if you heard what he said. No, he said, our, he said our beloved tall yeah, mayor. Say I, I, I hate our mayor more than any human being. Pretty much, he's in the top. Who wears lip? I hate the most. He said that his haters are his waiters, and they need to go get him a glass of water. And I'm like, I I really hope you never open your mouth again. On that mo- point, I don't know fuck all about this band or folk punk in general. Then you should have just been quiet about it. So my original video got deleted for um, harassment and bullying. I'm not sure how the, the video I stitched isn't, but regardless, I'm the current CEO of Folk Punk, and I'm here to tell you that whatever this guy's talking about, that's not what Folk Punk is about. 
Um, somebody was mean to that guy one time on a sidewalk and he took it out on an entire genre of music and a band that had nothing to do with it. We love our crusty friends, we love our traveling friends, they are always welcome in folk punk, but folk punk as a genre is acoustic punk music. That's it. It doesn't matter what kind of background you come from, it doesn't matter how you dress, all that matters is that you're making genuine music. Everybody is welcome as long as you're not being a terrible person. And I say this just to say that if you're a kid watching this and you're getting videos like that in your feed or you're reading comments that show up in like my comment section or other folk punk bands comment section like yeah. accusing them of being trust fund kids or not dressing crusty enough or anything like that uh, just know that nobody cares about that and you can make folk punk music if you want to if you want to pick up an acoustic guitar or a banjo or whatever and write some protest songs we want to hear them so please do it excellent stuff yeah and i think like what's really good here too is if you look at the the uh caption it's like that's what i was gonna say yeah go ahead then say it oh no what you said just the caption is such a good clapback like 100k followers 100 spotify monthlies like apes has like probably 12k followers and 50 60k monthlies like they're one of the most popular folk punk bands but they're really just getting started on tiktok i but i think particularly too what's interesting is that like while it's a clapback, it's a very positive and inclusive message. This is the thing. Yeah. Like, yet again, like, doing it in a classy way. Like, the, I, if you watch oh, – actually, we should watch the original because it shows how stupid it is. I don't know fuck all about this band or folk punk in general. And uh, I wear that as a badge of fucking honor. Because, you see, if we made a Venn diagram, okay, and in Circle A was avid folk punk enjoyers. And in Circle B was – well-adjusted, mentally and physically healthy, functioning members of society. The overlap would be minimal at best, assuming there was any. Now, correlation is not equal causation, but I am comfortable drawing the conclusion that not listening to folk punk makes me a better person. Incredibly just ignorant, stupid take, which is why it's getting roasted to hell. Uh, and uh, yeah. I think that that's a, a good lesson there that when you see somebody do something stupid, if you can galvanize community and be positive about it, you can get a lot of goodwill and a lot of good discovery. Absolutely. And again, like like the thing with Apes of the State, and if you go watch their stuff, you will see like she makes that joke about, oh, I'm the CEO of folk punk. But like very quickly, they were able to become like one of the main people in folk punk on TikTok. And there's actually a good amount of folk punk people on TikTok. You know, because it's it's a genre that lends itself well to TikTok because you could just like do your little voice and have your acoustic guitar and call it a day. Jeez, you know, man, but littling them with their little voice. She did the video on the voices, bro. Okay, <laughs> uh, you know, but um, I've listened to so much Johnny Hobo, Jesse. Okay, I'm allowed to say that. <laughs> but the the point being, this is. Like, she's just continually tapping into, this is my genre, I'm going to keep creating content around my genre, and I'm going to keep bringing more people in and making it seem like a cool place to hang out. The same way Windrose does that with their videos, the same way Bonganator does it with their video. We're going to create content in our space, and especially if it's like a micro space, and then keep telling people, come join the party. The party is cool. It's fun here. You're not going to have to deal with shitheads. You're going to have other people who, you know, she very clearly outlines some of the, not just the inclusivity, but some of the ideals of folk punk in terms of like protest songs and political music, right? It's like, cool. If that's what you're into, come be part of our party. And I think that's really crucial is letting other people be part of the game. Love it. So Matt, that brought, brings us to the end. 